My story for you begins with seven careless words that came from my own mouth. I am never going to use math. That's what I said decades ago in advanced high school geometry, and what happened next shaped my life. It was the beginning of a new school year, and the coursework in geometry was all about proofs, or validating already proven mathematical theorems. To justify my dislike of proofs, I also told myself the class shortly would be moving on to something else. In the life I envisioned for myself after high school, there was no point in learning proofs, so I didn't. One makes stupid calculations at age 15. Geometry, I realized in horror as the weeks unfolded, was to be nothing but proofs. So I went to my teacher for help. She talked geometry, but to me, the words were foreign. So we scheduled after-school appointments. That she tended to not keep. One day in passing me in the school hall, she casually tossed off, get help from a boyfriend. When my parents, alarmed at my grade, met with her to say that a D among the A's and B's on my report card did not make sense, my teacher replied, Heidi's a D student, isn't she? Trying to catch up on my own was the only thing I knew how to do, but I could not. A mean cycle had developed. The lower my math grade, the lower my self-esteem, and then lower still my math grade. Not only was I failing, I was failure. Then, at the beginning of a new term, my teacher called me to the front of the class. She told me I didn't belong, and she hissed the words, get out. Humiliated, I went to the one person who could not turn me out. We all in this life have known at least one person about whom we could say he or she made all the difference. For me, that person was Gordon Jack Miller, school guidance counselor. Within a few moments of my having asked the right person for help, geometry as chief authority in my life lost ground. Gordon Jack Miller took over, and this is what he said. One, the teacher did not have the authority to throw me out. Two, she had a responsibility to teach me. And three, the words that replanted my self-respect, you can do it. You're that kind of a student. Go back to class. Tell the teacher she must readmit you. I did go back and claimed my place and earned as a final grade an A. <laughs> my story is not extraordinary. What is extraordinary is that 40 years have passed, and what clings is the idea that being feminine precludes an interest in an aptitude for math, while former Harvard president Larry Summers has demonstrated the stupidity of suggesting that girls can't do math. What persists is the idea that girls don't do math. My story is a story of countless girls today, including Jade, who in 2006 was a national math champion when she was just in the fifth grade. Two years later, Jade encountered the new social rules that go with being an active, pretty 12-year-old girl. The popular girls in her new middle school didn't play tennis, at which she excelled and which she loved. Cheerleading was the thing to do. To be accepted by the popular girls, Jade conformed. First, her confidence slipped, then her grades, including her beloved math. That girl is now 18, and for six years her internal struggle has manifested in anorexia nervosa that for her has been a matter of life and death. A colleague, for the sake of helping girls embrace their intelligence, a colleague once said, let's cancel the prom. She was serious. And now, today, knowing what I do about what middle school culture has done to Jade, I say, let's cancel cheerleading. If we could see each girl as someone who's 
primary attributes were critical thinking and problem solving, perhaps the following numbers would be different. In 2006, the year Jade was national math champion, 44% of girls agreed with the following statement. The smartest girls in my school are not popular. Next, 17% of girls said it is true that teachers think it is not important for girls to be good at math. Next, between 2000 and 2008, the number of young women interested in majoring in computer science dropped 79%. We are living in the digital age, and yet the number of young women interested those who earned degrees in math and computer science peaked 30 years ago. We are academically profiling our children and making assumptions about who belongs in physics and calculus and other advanced placement courses is as insidious as thinking in 1963 that African Americans, then referred to as Negroes, didn't belong in white schools. Given the state of the U.S. economy and our lack of homegrown talent to fill jobs in science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM, our country needs the talents and contributions of all of our future thinkers and problem solvers. By the numbers, girls are more than one half of that talent base. The path of least math is no longer an option. And yet, given how we have discouraged girls in science and math, do we now dare dream that we can attract more of them to STEM? Yes, and here is what we must do. Four things. Number one, we must understand what girls value and appeal to those values academically. I teach physics to tween girls, those between the ages of 10 and 14, by appealing to things that interest most tween girls fashion, horses, and the target of their current crush. <laughs> you start talking to girls about how to attract the person on whom they're crushing, and you have the fullest attention of everyone in the room. <laughs> Seriously. Most tween girls love the idea of fashion design, so through Pretty Brainy, the education nonprofit I founded, I created a course in the STEM of fashion design. Through the course, girls work with not only physics, but they get hands-on with business math and wrist deep in the muck of soil science. They actively engage each step because to them, it's not soil science, it's fashion design, and that has a real-world purpose. I ask each one, with fashion design as your tool, how will you make the world a better place? Girls size up STEM by asking, how can I use this to fix what's wrong with the planet? And for them, that is a top access point to STEM. Second thing we must do, parents and teachers must demonstratively encourage girls in STEM. Research funded by the National Science Foundation shows a girl's interest in STEM is tightly tied to her faith in herself that she can do the work. The higher the confidence the higher the interest. And where does that self-confidence come from? Parents and teachers. Third thing we must do, girls need belonging with other mature and older girls in STEM. One of the things they consistently tell me they love about the STEM of fashion design is meeting and making friends with other girls just like them. So, Let's create environments where they can collaborate and bond with one another over problem solving that they value and that values them. Number four, we must make it safe for girls to make mistakes and to learn that problem solving is a process. Sadly, today, girls strive for a perfection that is so unhealthy. What role models do you want for girls? The Kardashians, and I do mean Kardashians now. <laughs> or Jane Goodall, Grace Hopper, Sally Ride. Let's help girls see that common notions of perfection are just that, common 
and arbitrary, and that experimentation and prototyping and do-overs are the new standard for which to strive. Helping girls change their perspective on themselves is so vital because the path of least math is no longer an option. It is estimated that girls who are not competent in at least basic college-level math, and some would say college-level calculus, will cut themselves off from 75% of the jobs being added to the U.S. labor market over the next four years. The path of least math is no longer an option. Everyone say it with me. The path of least math is no longer an option. So I invite you to a new beginning. What if your daughter were to be the scientist to discover the cure for Alzheimer's disease? What if your niece, what if one of the girls here today, the girl sitting next to you, were to be the person to write the computer program that would make life safer for everyone worldwide? When your girl is young, remember when she is young, what she says she will do with her life. She will need math to succeed. Her vision for her life may sound wacky. It may contradict your expectations of what girls do. No matter. Rise above. See her for who she is and see yourself for who you are. A hero with a mission.